Right, in the previous video, we used this calculation to find out which one was the limiting reactant and which one was the excess reactant in this chemical reaction. So that means we've answered the first part of the equation, that is how many grams of potassium chloride, uh, which one is the limiting reactant. So now we need to find out how many grams of potassium chlorate would be formed. Now, to finally find the final part of the answer, we need to go and see, right, which one of these two is the limiting reactant. So it's the potassium chloride. Now I know which one am I going to use to do a comparison between the reactant and the product, because this is my reactants and this is my product that was formed. To find out how much of this will I will get if I have 50 grams of, of the, the one reactant and 50 grams of the other one, I can only do that if I know which one of these two is going to get used up first. So after doing this calculation, we see that if we have 50 grams of potassium chloride, we will only use 32.17 grams of oxygen. So the oxygen will have left over. I've got 50 grams. I'm only going to use 32 grams. So I will have some oxygen left over, and oxygen became my excess. So I cannot use oxygen to find out how much of this I'm going to produce because it's not going to give me the correct answer. I cannot use up all the 50 grams. I'm only going to use up 32 grams. So that means I will take my limiting reactant and say, right, how much, if I have 50 grams of this, how much of the product? am I going to get? All right, so that means we'll do exactly the same type of calculation, but we start with 50 grams of potassium chloride. So for this one, we need to know how much, how many moles of potassium chloride do we have? Exactly the same as the first half of the previous calculation. How many moles of that do I have? Then I would have to find out if I have know how many moles of potassium chloride I have, I would have to find out how many moles of potassium chlorate that is going to be. And then when I know how many moles of potassium chlorate I'm going to use, then I can go find out how many grams of potassium chlorate is going to be produced in this chemical reaction. So, if I've got grams of potassium chloride on the top there, I must have grams of potassium chloride at the bottom here. Mole of potassium chloride on the top there, I must have mole of potassium chloride at the bottom here. If I have mole of potassium chloride, now be very careful with this one because potassium chloride, potassium chloride can look very similar. All right, now, I've already calculated my molar masses at the beginning of my reaction, or oh, my calculation, I mean. So it's very easy for me now to come and put in my values. So for this one here, going from moles of potassium chloride to moles of uh, mass of potassium chloride to mole of potassium chloride, I will use the molar mass, which I've determined is 74.6 grams per mole, exactly like I did there. So one mole is 74 six grams. Right. Then I will now look at my mole relationship between potassium chloride, so this one over here, and potassium chlorate. So now I'm going to look at that mole relationship and I see that they are in a relationship of 2 as to 2. Well, technically I can then ignore that part of my calculation because 2 divided by 2 is going to give me 1. Lastly, in this half, I'm going to use the mass of my potassium chlorate because I need to know how much potassium chlorate is going to form. So I will use the molar mass of potassium chlorate. And I saw that I'd calculated it to be 122.6 grams per mole. Remember, I got that from calculating using the molar masses. So that means one mole, one mole of potassium chloride is equal to 100 and 22.6 grams, 122.6 grams, the molar mass of potassium chlorate. Now, put this into my calculator, and my final answer that I get is 82.17 grams 
of potassium chloride. That is the mass of the potassium chloride that's going to be produced. So, now I know exactly the mass of the product that's going to form. Right? So, to calculate the mass of your product that you're going to get when you are given the mass of two substances or even the moles of two substances, you would have to go and find out which one of those two is my limiting reactant. This one was the limiting reactant. We saw that from our previous calculation. So now we use that limiting reactant to find out how much of the product is going to form. Just like we did with the batches of biscuits. We first went and looked at which one of the ingredients got used up first by comparing it. And then we went and looked at, okay, which one is the limiting reactant? The limiting reactant determines how much of the product I'm going to get. Because I did not have enough eggs, because I only had six eggs, remember, I could only form two batches of biscuits. So, because I only have 50 grams of potassium chloride and it's the one that's going to get used up first, I can use this one to find out how much of the product is going to form.